Hello everyone, welcome to this video and today we're gonna create the Google Chrome logo or the icon in Figma. So here's the original file that I downloaded from Wikipedia and this is the newest version of the Google Chrome logo. We're gonna start with a circle. So I'm gonna press the letter O on my keyboard to access the ellipse tool. And this logo is 200 pixels tall and we're gonna reflect that in our base circle like this, right? So we have a circle 200 by 200. It's no surprise that we are starting with the ellipse tool because the whole logo is around it, it's circular. And we also need to find out these, the size of these smaller circles within the logo, right? So you basically need to have two more circles. You need to have the, the circle that will mark this edge, kind of where the logo starts to be you know, white and then the very center circle, the blue one. So you have like kind of few circles laid on top of each other, right? So I'm going to use the ruler and click and drag to establish guides, right? So we're going to just basically measure the size of these circles. So this is right in between two pixels. So we cannot be that precise, but which is gonna be close enough. Okay, so now we have six guides and as you can see, it reflects these important levels precisely. So we're gonna select the base ellipse. I'm gonna rename this to base ellipse and we're gonna duplicate that. I'm gonna change color just so that we can see. Right, so that's one and then duplicate again and we have all the circles we need, right? We can go ahead and select the very middle one, um, then press I to sample a color, set the opacity back to 100 and we have the very middle circle, simple enough so far, right? And also we're gonna do same thing with the white circle. And the center of the logo is therefore finished. Now the next steps are not that simple. Uh, we will have to modify the shapes, modify the circle. And let's just quickly analyze what's going on here. So if you consider this border of these two colors of the red and the blue, uh, red and the yellow, sorry, you can see that it touches this white ellipse at the very top. And then it touches, you know, when you consider these two remaining borders, it touches the white ellipse in these two remaining places. What can we say about these three points? There are obviously three of them and it also appears to be distributed evenly across the 360 degrees that makes up a circle, right? So if we assume that these are indeed distributed evenly, which it certainly looks like, we could assign an angle to each of these points. So this angle would be zero because we started right here, you know, at the very top. Then when you go one third of the way from zero to 360 degrees, that's 120 degrees, right? Then you go one more step, one more third, and you're at 240 degrees. And then you go one more step and you're back at zero or also 360 degrees. So it appears to me that we have three shapes that are shaped like this and they are, each of those is rotated in increments of 120 degrees. Now we just need to create one of these and then duplicate that twice and rotate that twice. I'm gonna select this circle. Considering it touches this white circle at the very top, that means the border is basically, goes all the way to the, mi to the very middle of this, of this logo, right? So I'm gonna, I'm gonna create a rectangle that starts you know, where the top edge and the bottom edge kind of touch these guides. And I'm gonna, you know, again, make it reduce the opacity. I'm gonna just overlay it on top of this circle. Then I'm gonna take another rectangle and make sure it's 100 pixels wide. And I'm gonna align this with the very left edge of this circle. Right, so now we have 
we have this, right? What, what you want to do now is click on the base ellipse and duplicate that twice. So that's Command D and Command D. I'm going to select this rectangle and this ellipse, one of the copies of the ellipse, and go here to do to intersect these two shapes. What remains now is this shape, right? Then I'm going to select this rectangle and this copy of the base ellipse and again go to the track selection. So we have this shape and this shape. So that's what we have right now. I'm going to again sample the color from here so you can see our newly made cutout. I'm going to select both of these, unify the fill to let's say it's going to be absolutely red. This both of them are going to have 100% opacity. I'm going to group them and then I'm going to duplicate and then rotate minus 120 degrees, right? Minus 120. Um, I'm going to press enter to select these and then go to union selection. We still have this weird space all over here. So I'm just going to press command E to, you know, commit the changes and then I'm going to ungroup these two. Right, so that's this is what we have right now. And we now need to, I'm going to change the color of this to, let's say, I don't know, gray, just so that we can navigate this easy, more easily, visually speaking. And I'm going to align this with the right edge of the base ellipse, right? So I'm going to, we're going to have turn off snapping to pixel. So let's just see if that's possible. And it isn't, which means we're going to have to test, you know, set the X position to some decimal points so that we can, you know, at least approximate this to a level that will not be noticeable. So let's say we add 0.3, maybe 0.4. Yeah, I think this is close enough. So it's not perfectly aligned, right? If you, if I set this to red, you can see that. Well, I don't know if you can actually see it, but yeah. So it's not perfectly aligned if you really zoom in, but I think we are looking at maybe an error of like 0.05 pixels. So I think that's acceptable and therefore going to go ahead with, with this, right? And now we, we will also duplicate this thing again, or actually we can just copy the very first one and then rotate that one 120 degrees. And again, set the opacity a bit lower so that it's transparent, maybe change the color again. This is getting kind of confusing, but it will be, this will make sense once we're actually done with the operation. So I, again, I merge these two shapes and I need to align with the with the bottom edge and I also need to align this with the left edge of the base like so, right? So now what do we have here? I select this to again transparent red somehow and this as well. Now we basically have these three shapes. We have this one, this one and this one, right? And they are all centered against the background. What do we do now? We're going to actually start sampling the color from our logo. So I'm going to set the opacity to 100, press I and sample the color and select this one, this yellow part, second part, set the opacity to 100 and then I and select that. And then finally, I'm going to move this to the top, the last one. And I mixed up the colors. So the yellow is actually not going to be yellow, but that's going to be green, right? And then this one that I thought will be green, that's going to be actually yellow. I put from here, right? So you can see that this is, we are almost there, but we have one, a tiny problem. And that's, we cannot arrange it in such a way where all of these edges are visible. How do we do that? Well, first of all, I'm going to just copy this over here and move that to the very top so that you can see how close we are to the final result. You can see that we have, we have the almost, we have almost the, the green. So first of all, the, the red one, that's completely finished, right? That's, that perfectly corresponds with the original. The green one, well, we need this yellow thing right here, but it's also almost finished. So why don't we solve this yellow one? You can see that right now it's at the very bottom. And what we're going to do now is duplicate this yellow part and then move that to the very top on, of all of these colors. And the final step will be selecting this newly duplicated yellow part of the logo, double click or press enter and then remove this part of the, of the shape, right? So we're going to select these three vertices 
these three vertices and hit backspace. Our shape disappeared. Why is that? We disconnected these two vertices. So we're going to have to repeat the process and do that properly. So we're not going to select these three, but only these two vertices and then hit backspace. Is that going to work? Yeah. It works. Now we are almost, almost there. You can see that we just need to cover this green part right here and we are completely finished with our Google Chrome logo. So if you select this shape and press enter, you can see that we have this vertex right here. We need to click here and create another one and then move that over here so that it you know goes all the way up to the yellow part and then cover that completely and now my friends we are finished and we group all of this we name this group google chrome logo created in figma and then we take this group and move it below so this is the original and this is what we have created in Figma. Let me know in the comments what you think. Let me know if this is close enough, but I think this is pretty much identical. And that is how you create a Google Chrome logo in Figma. Leave a like if you'd like to see more logos created in Figma, and I will see you in the next one.